swung off, looked in absolute agony. And you can see that bunch there. They're going to be riding there at about 50 km, 48, 50 kilometers an hour. And it's hard. You know, the riders are going out the back who have got shelter. And the riders at the front are absolutely pressing on as hard as they can. Christian Knees grimacing, looking after his team leader for today. Uh, Amigo Farmer Farmer quick to to go. Go. Valverde is in amongst the uh, movie star riders towards the front as well. Oh, problems down. Mm. A couple of riders have gone down. And I tell you what, that's at, uh, that's at pretty fast speed. And the Top Sport Vlanderen team looks like it's lost two riders uh, to that in one fell swoop. Fell swoop being the, uh, being the phrase. Is that uh, Crater? I think it is. Yeah, Raymond Crater. We got him in there. Oh, three riders down at least. Oh my God. And is that four riders? Oh, three riders three. from Top Sport Vlanderen. So four in total. That's absolute disaster for that group as they were assembling Ooh. as far up as they could. And instantly they lost three riders just falling like skittles. Another Katusha rider delayed. Crater also delayed. And I think he might have picked up a puncture as a result of it. So that's uh, uh, nasty crash. That was at speed. Painful. That was at speed. This is the thing at this Harold stage Bengel of the race. Coming down to the last 25 kilometers, and there's a crash at the back of the lead group. And I can tell you that in amongst those riders, delayed, not uh, too seriously delayed, I hope, but is the reigning champion of E3, Harold Becker. It's Fabian Cancellara. Plenty of other uh, very strong riders, too, who've been uh, inconvenienced by this. And lots of uh, riders needing to take on extra, or take on new wheels throughout this. And the uh, Looks like uh, not more than 15 riders in front of this as uh, Fabian Cancellara gets, gets a little bit of attention yeah. to that uh, <laughs> to that back wheel. I don't know how he managed to reach over to the rear mech there, but uh, Cancellara, it's like a video game. He knows exactly where to put his bike and realizes too that he's going to have to do this himself. Look at the speed there. Went past that group like they were standing still. Interesting, he hasn't got any teammates that have yet dropped back. They are all on race radios. They should know that Cancellara is left alone. He won't get much help from the people behind him. Of course, Cannondale certainly won't ride with, uh, if, on the assumption, of course, that Peter Sagan wasn't stopped by that crash. I haven't seen him yet, although there is a Cannondale rider in there. I can see the green helmet. Actually, it looks like he is there. This is going to be a very difficult chase. He's going to have to link up with some riders. But look at the power, clearly in form at the moment. As you say, Declan had a difficult start to the year, so ended up racing. Well, this is good news for those riders who uh, were in great difficulty of uh, going out the back and not coming back. Amble it all. Uh, is it going to be on one throw of the dice inside the final kilometre, or will he go all the way to the line and see can he manage to come around uh, Peter Sagan? It really is a tactical conundrum for Omega Pharma Quick Step. Second would be a massive disappointment with two riders up front in the break, and especially with the standards they've, they've set in classic racing over the last 10 or 12 years, particularly this year. They've been absolutely flying, and they have strength in numbers, but do they have a rider as strong as uh, Peter Sagan with just 1,200 metres to go as they make this uh, left turn, and here comes another attack from uh, the back of the group. It's Vandenberg that's gone again. He's clearly stronger than... Uh, than Terpstra. Terpstra really has to dig in to hold Peter Sagan's wheel and yes. Vandenberg able to lay down the watts but just not quite even able to get a gap enough to uh, to get a you know to force Peter Sagan to chase for any length of time. No it was a very intelligent move to use the, the road furniture you, to your advantage but didn't quite have the horsepower or the sharpness and if I was Geraint Thomas I'd want to ride fourth man they're not third you don't want another rider behind you. All action behind but all our eyes are on what's happening up front as we head towards the kite Peter Sagan is uh, spending at least as much time looking over his shoulder as he is on the road ahead Geraint yeah. Thomas too perhaps a little concerned as he waits for the anticipated attack from Stein Vandenberg because there's no way there's not going to be another one constantly glad now is the time here it comes, it just comes. Vandenberg it. goes on the right hand side of the road Thomas knew all about it and that means that uh, Peter Sagan doesn't have to cover this one and it's uh, Vandenberg that's going to lead it out Terpstra is killing himself to stay with them and Thomas goes Thomas goes on the right hand side of the road but so too does Peter Sagan on the left and they've gone for a long one all the way to the line Peter Sagan looks Looks like he's comfortable, and he gets his hands in the air. The big one-day classic in Belgium goes to Vader Sagan. Second, I believe, was uh, Geraint Thomas.